welcome. Greetings, unsettled souls. Welcome to the Correct Views, and in the name of preserving literature, and in the in the tradition, the American tradition of keeping good literature alive, I would like to read for you "If I Ran the Zoo" by Dr. Seuss. It's a pretty good zoo said young Gerald Magoo, and the fellow who runs it seems proud of it too. But if I ran the zoo, said young Gerald Magoo, I'd make a few changes, that's what I'd do. The lions and tigers, that kind of stuff, they have up there now, are not quite good enough. You see, things like these and any old zoo, they're awfully old-fashioned. I want something new. So I'd open each cage. I'll unlock every pen. Let the animals go and start over again. And somehow or other, I think I could find some beasts of some beasts of a more unusual kind. A four-footed lion is not much of a beast. The one in my zoo will have ten feet at least. A four-footed, excuse me. Five legs on the left and five more on the right. Then people will stare and they'll say, what a sight. My new zoo, Magru Zoo, will make people talk. My new zoo, Magru Zoo, will make people gawk. They'll be so surprised, they'll swallow their gum, their gum. They'll ask when they see my strange animals come. Where do you suppose he gets things like that from? If you want to catch beasts you don't see every day, you have to go places quite out of the way. You have to go places no others can get to. You have to get cold, and you have to get wet, too. I'll catch them in caves. I'll catch them in brooks. I'll catch them in crannies. I'll catch them in nooks. Then you don't read, that you don't read about in geography books. I'll load up five boats with a family of jotes whose feet are like cows but wear squirrel skin coats, and sit like dogs, but have voices like goats, expecting they can't sing the very high notes. And then I'll go down to the wilds of Nantucket and capture a family of looks in a bucket. Then people will say, no, I like that boy heaps. His new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is growing by leaps. He captures them wild, he captures them meek, he captures them slim, he captures them sleek. What do you suppose he'll capture next week? In the far western part in southeast North Dakota lives a very fine animal called the Iota. But I'll capture one who is seven who is even much smaller in the northeastern and west part of South Carolina, who is even finer, excuse me, who is even much finer in the northeastern and western, in the northeastern and west part of South Carolina. Pardon me. When people see him, they will say, Now by thunder, this new zoo, McGrew Zoo, is really a wonder. I'll bag a big bug who is very surprising, a feller who has a propeller, propeller for rising, and zooming around making cross-country hops from Texas to Boston with only two stops. Now that kind of thing for a bug is just tops. In a cave in Khartoum is a beast called a natch that no other hunter's been able to snatch. He's hidden for years in his cave with a pout, 
and no one's been able to make him come out, but I'll coax him out with a wonderful meat, a wonderful meal that's cooked up by cooks in my cooker mobile. They'll fix up a dish that is just to his taste. Three chicken croquettes made of library paste, then sprinkled with peanut shucks, pickled and spiced, then baked at 600 degrees, and then iced. It's mighty hard cooking to cook up such feasts, but that's how the new zoo, Megruzu, gets beasts. He hunts which such vim. He hunts with such vigor, his new zoo, McGrew Zoo, gets bigger and bigger. Then the whole town will gasp, why this boy never sleeps. No keeper before ever kept what he keeps. There is no telling what that young fellow will do. And then, just to show them, I'll sail to Katuru and bring back an ikach, a peep and a prue, a nurkle, a nerd, and a seer sucker too. This zookeeper, new keeper, simply astounding. He travels so far that you think he'd drop. When do you suppose this young fellow will stop? Stop? Well, I should. But I won't stop until I've captured the Fizzama Wizamadil, the world's biggest bird from the island of Gwark, who only eats pine trees and spits out the bark. And boy, when I get him back home to my park, the whole world will say, Young McGrews made his mark. Thank you for sharing this with your children. Once again, if you don't know, they have been trying to ban and censor the works of this fine writer, and my meager attempt at reading it just now hopefully brought you some joy. Share it with your children. That is how you stop censorship from happening. Good night, friends. God bless. Please donate at the correct views at hotmail.com through PayPal.